The Science and Survival exhibit features a collection of photographs and letters that reveal an intimate, first-hand account of scientists fleeing Nazi Germany during the Second World War. This historical archive allows rare insight into the Bredig family's scientific careers, personal lives, and their salvation. Georg Bredig was a well-known professor and scholar of physical chemistry. In 1898, he created Bredig's Arc Method, a new method for preparing colloidal solutions of metals. In the late 1920s, his son, Max, excelled even further in the field of chemistry. Working in Berlin, he engaged with the world's most renowned scientists, including Erwin Schrödinger and Albert Einstein. Max was working as a research chemist at the Bavarian Nitrogen Works, overseeing the company's X-ray and optical division when the National Socialists seized power in 1933. Like all Germans of Jewish heritage, Max became the target of anti-Semitic attacks. His father, Georg, was forced into early retirement after the Nazi government banned Jews from teaching at German universities. Each day brought new indignity as the Nazi regime continued to strip away rights from German Jews until only their citizenship remained. Then the Nuremberg Laws of 1935 took that away. Max took these warnings seriously and prepared to flee Germany. He asked his father to join him, but Georg refused, still hoping for a return to the Germany he had loved. Disenfranchised and robbed of his vocation, Georg turned his attention to his scientific legacy. The burning of books by Jewish authors had been underway since 1933, and he feared his life's work would be destroyed by a fascist mob. Georg hurried to find a haven for his library. In May 1937, he wrote the Daniel Seif Research Institute in Palestine. I would like to send you a collection of all of the scientific works and publications written by me and my colleagues in the various fields of chemistry. If you are interested in this donation, please respond as soon as possible. A follow-up letter reinforces the need for urgency. I am working on compiling the collection of my scientific works which I offered you in my letter. Please let me know very soon. Max fled Germany the same year, finally arriving at the University of Michigan, where he had been offered a fellowship. Having landed safely, his thoughts now turned to those left behind. His father and sister were still reluctant to leave. Marianne had just married and was raising three stepchildren, and she was unwilling to leave her father behind. My biggest worry these days is Dad, she writes. Although he is healthy, he is very sad and of a sadness that is difficult to cure. I do not want to separate from him. Then on November 9th, 1938, came Kristallnacht. Georg, his son-in-law Victor, and 500 other Jews from their city were arrested, beaten, and publicly humiliated. Victor's family bank was confiscated by the state, and although Georg was released the following day, Victor was sent to the Dachau concentration camp where he was imprisoned for six weeks. The events of Kristallnacht finally convinced Georg to leave Germany. He made it to the Netherlands in 1939, but it was then up to Max to get him across the Atlantic. Max set out to secure his father a teaching position at an American university. This was his only hope of securing a visa. Princeton University responded. In a 1940 radiogram from the Netherlands, Georg tells Max that he has sent his documents to Princeton and that he should be leaving for the United States soon. Airmailed December 17th and 29th documents, Princeton. Received passport and ticket promised. Sister's letter underway. Although Georg was now safe in America, his daughter and son-in-law were not as fortunate. In October of 1940, the couple, along with 11,000 other Jews from the Baden region of Germany, were forcibly deported to Vichy, France, and sent to the Gurs internment camp. Max now focused all of his efforts on saving them. He was able to arrange shipments of food and clothing to the camp through a network of allies, and money was sent to bribe local officials and anyone else who could assist in securing Marianne and Victor's release. In a letter from the Gurs internment camp, Marianne writes, As long as the sun shines, it is bearable here. If it rains and gets cold, it is quite terrible. 
what people here are suffering cannot be expressed. Finally, in 1941, Max, now working as a chemist in New York City, secured the visas, transit permits, and transport necessary to rescue them from the camp. He sends a telegram to Marianne and Victor with the good news. Booked 3, Portuguese, SS, NASA. Lisbon, May 20th. Speed visas immediately. Victor replies, I cannot find words to express my gratitude for all you have done for us these last seven months. Without your generous help, dear Max, we would have never been able to escape the big misery in which we found ourselves. Victor and Marianne were among the lucky ones. Of the 11,000 Jews evacuated from Baden and sent to Gers, only about 1,000 were released. Approximately 1,000 others would die in their first winter. Most of the remaining 9,000 were sent to extermination camps in Poland. With his family safe, Max pressed on, working to get more Jewish colleagues out of Europe. He had several successes, such as chemists Alfred Ries and Fritz Hochwald. But despite his best efforts, Max could not save everyone. His friends, Alfred and Eva Schnell, fled Nazi Germany to take up residency in The Hague. When Germany invaded the Netherlands, life became increasingly difficult. With help from the Dutch resistance movement, the Schnells found refuge on a farm 40 miles east of Amsterdam. They sent short messages to Max through the Red Cross, often writing in code and using aliases to protect their identities. These letters were their only lifeline to the outside world. In the autumn of 1944, Max lost contact with the Schnells. According to eyewitness accounts, the Schnells were arrested during a German raid. That night, a pair of Dutch Nazis took Eva and Alfred from their cells along with four other prisoners. They were taken to a park and told to dig six holes. When Eva protested, she was shot, and the rest were murdered immediately after. Max learned of the Schnell's death from a letter he received just after the end of the war. It was because of his tireless work that his family avoided the same fate. In a photograph taken in 1943, we see the Bredig family reunited in America. Written on the back of the picture, Happy Ending in Colorado. Max Bredig is remembered as a renowned scientist. He published roughly 100 scientific papers and is best known for his work on the interaction of molten metallic halides. The mineral Bredigite is named in his honor. These letters and photographs share the intimate history of the Bredig family's survival. So many personal accounts of the Holocaust may never be known. The Science and Survival exhibit at the Science History Institute helps give voice to these silent memories. <laughs>